Good afternoon, St. Joe Bears. This is Dr. Bruce, and I am your superintendent of schools. And what I want to do today is take a look at our opening plans. Um, it's just a general overview because you can read them yourselves. They're on our website. Uh, but I want to give you a little bit of context to that. And then probably most importantly, is trying to answer some of the questions that people have left in the last week or so. Um, I want to let you know I appreciate you trying to join this afternoon. Um, we found out that the, the streaming system would stream very well to our own Google accounts, but not to any outside accounts. So that was a problem. So we're recording now, and we're going to share everything with you. Uh, feel free to continue to ask questions over the coming weeks. Um, but I have some dates for you, some answers for you, and I want to share the program, the, the plans with you. So thank you again, um, and let's get started. So I'm going to use paper product right now. I don't use this very often. Um, how did these plans get started? Well, this originally began at the governor's level. And at the governor's level, they put together some committees of students, staff, parents, administrators, and they came up with this plan. You've probably seen this one by now. Um, this one is linked to a lot of different things I've done online, on the Sunday Bear News. Um, I'll make sure it's on our website from today on, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. That plan was pretty thick, um, but it was posted June 30th, okay, so over a month ago. And I got to tell you, a lot of things have changed since June 30th. Um, our understanding of things has changed and things have been a little more flexible. Um, but that was the initiating piece for the plans that we posted Friday afternoon. The other piece I wanted to share with you today, and I'll come back to this, this document is one you want to keep an eye out for. It's kind of a yellowish document. It is also linked in some of our stuff. It'll be on our webpage as well. This is one that the Bering County superintendents asked to have put together by the health department, by the Bering County Health Department. And it has some great information in there as well. And last but not least, we are working with our Bering County Regional Educational Support Agency, that's the BRESA, um, and to kind of get information out again to our families. Um, this guide is um, going to be posted up in a lot of different places. We'll have it here in our websites as well, um, but hopefully some of these things can start answering some questions for you. I want to say right now, I, I feel like I understand where our families are in that uh, we've given you two choices. We've asked you to consider where would you like to have your student or students um, educated this fall. And we have this virtual model, which is totally online. And then we have this face-to-face -face or in-person model. And that can turn into remote learning. So you have the two options, face-to-face -face or virtual full-time. And there's not a lot of answers yet because we, we still are trying to figure out how all this is going to come together. The virtual piece is a little more clear. And Mr. Andrew Prattley, who's been answering a lot of your questions already, is putting a lot of stuff together so you have more information on that virtual model. Um, we partnered with Ed Menem. They're top of the line. Uh, their curriculum will be aligned to our curriculum here in St. Joe. Their teachers will coordinate with our teachers and our mentors. Our mentors come from St. Joe. So that will be a pretty solid piece as far as things are kind of figured out. On the other side of the coin is face-to-face -face learning. And that's really what these plans are talking about, is that on-site learning. What does that look like? Because of all the safety, um, new protocols, procedures, policies that we have to uh, make sure happen in those classrooms and in the hallways and before and after school, it changes everything we've done in the past. So in past years, how a student came in and out of the building, how they ate lunch, recess, breaks, transition in the hallways, all that has to change now, every little piece of it. And then how we clean behind and in front of students all has to change now. So that is an an inundated, <laughs> that is a really big job um, that we're going through. I will tell you, we're not doing this in a vacuum. Our district and myself are working with um, other uh, Bering County superintendents. I also work with superintendents in the southeast corner and north and uh, Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo. And of course, I still have my, 
my peers out west, and we bounce ideas all the time. Um, no one has the answer yet because this is a totally new, novel situation. Um, but it, what I can tell you is where we are today will be better next week, and where we are next week will be even better the following week. Where we start on day one in school, it will get better the following week. We will continue to make iterations of these plans. We'll continue to partner with you to make the best determination, the best choices for you and our students and our staff as we move forward. Our key piece is to be safe in school. Our key piece for virtual is to make sure they have social support. So we wanna make sure our students, no matter which route you choose, have everything you need to be safe and, and still get a great education, a world-class education. The document I'm gonna to share today, um, many of you have probably seen it, maybe you've read over it and annotated it and highlighted it and everything else. So I'm not gonna tell you a whole lot of new pieces there. I mean, you can read it yourself, it's on our website. Um, but I need to tell you, it's a living document. It will continue to change. We'll continue to update it with dates and so forth. Um, but it's important to know that that is a living document and as more information comes in, as the governor moves things around or we find out new and better research on students in classrooms or whatever it may be, we'll, we'll be flexing that document to do that. And as we get closer to the school year, we start figuring out how can students actually move through the hallway? How can we actually clean up behind them? We will continue to change that document. So I'm, I'm apologizing for not being able to give you all the best answers you probably want today. But this is, this is the environment we're in right now. I will tell you, I have the best team. I have the smartest people around. I have an outstanding community and foundation. Um, great people to bounce things off from. And we're planning the best we can do. And those plans will continue to get better and more in focus as we move forward. So that said, I wanna walk through the plan. I have all three plans pulled up. Um, I'm gonna make some big points in there just to make sure uh, everybody understands it. So let me present my screen. And we are recording today. Um, I didn't apologize already earlier. We sent out the link and it only worked on our own um, district emails. It did not work for the outside emails. So this is why we're recording and you'll be able to see this later today. So here we have, this is the uh, Upton Middle School plan. And you can see here, it's a site-based reopening plan. So a lot of people ask like, hey, where's the virtual plan? Where's the virtual plan? That's largely laid out because Edmentum has had virtual classes with other states, other cities, bigger districts than us, and even other countries. So how that all works will be pretty seamless. Um, right now, we're just working with them to kind of make it customized to what we need here in St. Joe. Um, and that's the beautiful part of that model with Edmentum is we get to tweak things so it's, it's good for us and our families. So this is a site-based plan. Because as I said earlier, we have to redesign everything we're doing um, and, and just review and reanalyze and reimagine it all um, for safety. So it starts out, um, it gives you a little introduction here. And here's the big piece. In this plan, you're gonna see phase three, phase four, phase five. Now there are six phases, one through six. None of the superintendents that I talk to think we'll ever get to six in the near future. So it's no need to worry about it. That's clean and clear, everybody's fine. We're back to normal. Um, phase one through three, we don't have to have one through three on there because phase one through three, schools are shut down, we're not learning in the schools, kaput. So phase three tells us what would that'll look like. So if your family chooses face-to-face -face learning and we go to phase three, your students will be learning from home from their own teacher, the teacher they had in their classroom. Okay, in phase four and five, and currently we are in phase four, in phase four and five, we can have face-to-face -face instruction. In St. Joe, we're choosing to go with face-to-face -face instruction. Your student will have a teacher and they'll go through the day like they normally would. Just, we're gonna have a lot of different processes and procedures for safety. They'll wear a mask, um, they'll come in certain doors. I'll need families to do self-checks every single morning. 
there's there's different things, but at least they're in with their friends, with their peers, with their teacher learning. Phase five, it's here, but it's very similar to phase four. Uh, you may notice with some districts, there's a difference between phase four and phase five, like phase five loosens things up quite a bit. We chose not to do that. One, we can be bebopping between each of these phases throughout the school year, and that creates a lot of inconsistency. So we've chosen to basically run phase three or phase four. Phase five is gonna be very similar to phase four. A lot of the same cleaning procedures are all gonna be in place. Kids will be acting and moving the same exact way. We just want consistency for our students and for our staff, and the expectations are the same, very high. So we're leaving phase four and phase five very similar. This note, please note, face-to-face -face learning can seamlessly transition to hybrid or remote learning um, for the safety of our students and staff. We really felt strongly about adding this note in because who knows what's gonna happen in the year 2021? We really don't. Um, things are changing within 24 hours, drastically within 24 hours. And I'm not talking, you know, three degrees. I'm talking 180 degrees. So to just say we're not going to do one of these things or we have to do it, you know, at a specific time, we need a little more flexibility than that. So this, this note just is aware, parents be aware, we may have to change how things move in our school or how we instruct just to meet the needs of whatever comes in 2021. Phases of safe school start. Again, this is the phases right out of this plan. Um, it just gives you a little more information. What is phase one, two, three, four, five, and six? This is a, I'm really proud of this portion of our plan. This is our social, emotional learning and wellness. And we chose to put it right in the front. Um, there's a, a beautiful written uh, paragraph right here about that. Um, and the idea is there's a lot of uncertainty. I don't have to tell you, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And that creates anxiety and the places and things that people used to do have changed. Some things change for the better, but th that change is difficult for people. And then there's the whole safety issue. Am I safe? Am I safe at work? Am I safe at school and so forth? So I truly believe this, this social, emotional and wellness piece will be huge for us. We're very lucky here in St. Joe, we have outstanding counselors, outstanding social workers. They've already done a lot of this work and I've been in other districts and I can compare. This is a great team. They partner with outside resources. They partner with outside um, caregivers and so forth. They have outstanding plans in place. They have outstanding resources. Um, so they're doing some great work already and they will just be extending that work for us and our staff and our students. There's links throughout this plan that were added. So if you wanna click on these to get more information, you can. So the first part of this, pro this plan is about phase three. And again, this is if we have to go to remote learning, if you're a face-to-face -face option. If you're virtual, you will always stay virtual. It's consistent. But if you wanna be face-to-face -face and we go to phase three, now you're remote being taught by your teacher at home. And it just kind of goes through, you know, what, is it, what does it look like? How do we do a communication? You'll notice up here it says Power School Parent Portal. That's how you will find out how are your students doing? What is their attendance? Are they turning stuff in? You may get some other pieces there, but that, that's important to find out how are your students doing? That's really secondary. Um, the other piece, since COVID started in March, we had the COVID emergency learning, we've agreed to all go to Google Classroom as our learning management system. So every, every teacher in um, St. Joseph Public Schools will be using Google Classroom this year. So there's a one-stop shop for all parents, all students. We're not all over the place. We've, we've streamlined all of that. I will say in grades K2, maybe K3, they will be using Seesaw quite a bit as well. It's an outstanding program for kids to show what they know and share with their peers and even family. Um, so we kept that. But Google Classroom is the root of everything. So as you're doing this stuff, um, watch for Google Classroom. Assignments and assessments. Again, I alluded to um, COVID emergency learning this spring. 
Um, I want to say two things about that. One, it was emergency learning, meaning we switched over from face-to-face -face instruction to a more of a remote or emergency learning situation in a couple days, basically over a weekend. And the idea was it was supposed to last for two, maybe three weeks. It ended up lasting like three months. Um, the other piece was is we were really unaware of COVID and its impact on our families and so forth. So uh, news from the top was we're not allowed to do assessments. We're really not allowed to check attendance. We're not allowed to put those pressures on families. Um, we're in a different situation this fall. This remote learning, if you, were, if you choose face-to-face -face and we have to go to phase three where you're doing remote learning, it will not be similar to this fall. You'll notice in here, you'll see assignments and assessments. You'll see down a little bit farther, grades and feedback. Attendance will be taking. We will be running our curriculum as we would if we were face-to-face -face using your teachers. So this is quality stuff. On top of that, you need to know this. Our teachers have already started their professional development for planning to do this work. Um, a couple of our people, Mrs. Durlam and Mr. Prattley and Mrs. G Mrs. Gadeski, have been working really, really hard on building what we call the passport. And the passport has teachers doing their professional development based on what they need, based on research and best practice, what they need to be effective in remote instruction. And if teachers get these five big categories completed and show that they've passed and know these pieces, they have a passport for learning in, in the remote instruction area. So we're making a, a great big deal out of making sure our, our teachers are ready capable and effective with remote instruction. We have amazing people, but this is different. So we want to make sure everybody's uh, enhanced, right? So grades and feedback, you'll see your what's expected there, Spe specific meetings. How does the office work? Well, as you know, if you go into a really small store these days, they might only allow three customers in the store. It's a larger store, they may have couple people come in, but they may have marks on the floor to keep people separated. Uh, you may use appointments and wait in your car till the appointment's called. Um, these are all new strategies to, to make that space um, safe. Our offices will continue to refine our strategies. Each of the offices are different, different sizes in different locations. Um, but we want to have access to our families, but at the same time, we will not be allowing volunteers in the building. At least in the beginning, we have to lock everything down, keep our cohorts as tight as possible, keep tracing as easy as possible. Um, so we will not be allowing um, outside people into our hallways or classrooms uh, in the beginning here at least. I, I, I don't know if that will change. That depends on probably the phase level or maybe a vaccine at, that, at some point. But we need to keep things as tight and small as possible to begin the school year. Food service in, in phase three will, will continue to happen. Um, students will pay for lunch if they need them. If they are part of free or reduced lunch, they would get that free or reduced rate. Um, athletics, this is a big one. We're still waiting to hear um, how Michigan um, MHSSA is going to um, move on this one. Uh, as you probably heard earlier today, the Big Ten is not having football. It's very sad for me. Uh, the MAC conference, MAC conference, uh, noted yesterday or two days ago or a few days ago that they would not be playing football. Um, so there's some big things moving right now in the area of athletics. You may also know that we are conducting practices, um, I'll call training and exercise for our athletes at the high school. Um, there are a number of protocols, very strict protocols in place to make sure that goes off safely. And knock on wood, that is working well for us so far. It's also kind of tip of the spear for us. In other words, we're, we're going to be watching how that works to help us start into classrooms as well. Um, but, you know, when you think about football, you're sharing equipment, you're running into each other, um, so on and so forth. And that that's going to be difficult to do. However, you look at like cross country, that's a little easier to do. It's on your own, right, practically. So we will wait and see where the, the Michigan Athletic Association comes down on this. Um, 
At the same time, I want to say this, this is important. If athletics is uh, halted for 2021, or at least the first semester, we would also be halting robotics, which is a competition, and band competition. So if one tribe, the uh, athletics are not competing, then the other two would not compete as well. So we're listening and waiting for that piece. If athletics is allowed to continue some fashion, then we would look for ways to continue safely with robotics and band competition. So those, those things kind of go hand in hand. Extracurricular activities, we're talking about clubs and programs after school. Largely those things are eliminated at this point for after school meeting face to face because we will be cleaning on those times. Um, so, and, and it's about reducing all the things we're doing right now. We're trying to reduce things, keep things very small and manageable so we can let the dust settle, see how our processes and procedures work, and then we can grow things out from there. If a club or activity can meet remotely, by all means, we hope they do. We want them to do that. The social piece will be important, but meeting after school face-to-face -face will not be happening, especially in phase three. Phase four, so the plan now moves into phase four. This is face-to-face -face instruction. And we added this little paragraph here for as a note. And what it says is we will um, have some sort of orientation or phase in when we start school. In other words, if I continue to say we're replanning, reimagining no, all new processes and procedures as we go to school, no one's ever seen them before. We've never run them before. It would be crazy to bring 3,000 plus kids back into school and try and run it like day one of any other year. So we won't be doing that. We will be phasing in somehow, probably in the first week, bringing in portions of students that choose to be face to face and walking through how the day will look, uh, maybe getting them the materials they need, meet your teacher, so forth. And then as we follow up with that, then we would come back uh, more full time. So that's how I imagine us going in the in the fall here. There's also a piece in there about we could have or implement up to two weeks of a remote instruction. The reason that's in there is it's likely at some point we would get knocked from phase four where we are now to phase three, which we go from face to face instruction straight to remote instruction. We have great plans. As I said, the, the teachers are already doing their professional development. Um, we know how we're going to do it, has grades, has feedback, has dates, has, uh, you know, uh, attendance, everything's ready to roll, but we haven't done it like this yet. It seems to me it would be important to run that remote instruction before we have to go to it in an emergency. I could see us going to phase three during cold and flu season. So we're talking now about would we want to run remote instruction for a week, maybe two, in the fall to make sure everything's working? That seems like a good idea. So it's likely you'll see something like that. When or if we do that, I will give you plenty of time out front so you can plan for childcare and so forth, um, but that will be important to make sure that we give the best instructional um, experience to your students as possible. And we wanna make sure our teachers have everything they need to do the best job possible. So in phase four, we're face to face. Um, students are coming into schools, going to classrooms, eating their lunch and so on. And that's all here. This first line is super important. Parents will conduct a daily safety check of their students. Per the, the health department, it is best if our parents assess their students every morning before putting them on the bus or dropping them off at school because if we had to do it one we're not sure it's actually legally uh, appropriate but we would be having them line up and and scanning foreheads and so forth and asking if they had a cough and all these other things it would take a drastic amount of time and if you can imagine at the high school a thousand kids standing three to six feet apart it, it's it's nuts right so we can't do that it, it would create more chaos. So the idea is parents, we need you guys to check your students every morning. Um, if you have a thermometer, that's the best way. 
and then you'll be looking for specific things. And I'll, I'll go over those things in a few minutes, but you can also click on this link and it'll, it'll take you there. Um, if you have illness, please stay home. I know we've all had students that were a little under the weather in the morning. We give them an Advil and send them to school and they're better by noon. We can't do that. If, if it looks like COVID symptoms or symptoms that are similar, please keep them home. We have a remote option. Our teachers will be very supportive and please leave them home. Do not send them to school. Our staff also has a daily online screening process. Um, they can do it right on their phone before they come to work. They can do it at home while they're getting ready for work, um, but it keeps track of all the data. So they, they basically um, check themselves and it goes into a database system. So we have all that as well. Um, I put some other links in here for signage and hygiene and other things that we'll be doing. Um, what a face mask actually is and how to, how to wash a face mask. Um, we will be purchasing two face masks for every student, two face masks for every teacher. Um, it's your job to make sure it's washed and cleaned every night. Um, if you want to wear your own face mask, face covering, you may. Um, for students, just like t-shirts, if it's not appropriate, we'll have them put on a paper one for the day. Um, so we'll have, we'll have masks available in the office as well. The middle school map, uh, the middle school plan and the high school plan both have maps in them so you can see where drop-offs are, where kids are coming in and exiting and so forth. Uh, the elementary plan, since there's three schools that are within that plan, they chose to do theirs at their back-to-school paperwork. So whether you're Brown or Lincoln, you'll see the, your maps there, um, E.P. Clark as well. So you'll see your maps in, in future paperwork but the elementary, uh, secondary schools put it right in the plan because they're the only ones. Uh, what does instructional time look like? There'll be a lot of assigned seating, making sure that students uh, keep their distance. Um, here's, here's the piece about the uh, safety in classrooms if you're in person. Um, in May and June, the biggest thing we talked about even through March was six feet of safety distance. And as I understand and have read recently, that six feet of safety distance for was from the CDC years ago based on respiratory illness. It is not specific to COVID, but COVID is a respiratory illness, so that's what stuck. It's also kind of the maximum footage or uh, distance that we've seen, so that makes sense, especially in the early days of COVID. If you look at um, the WHO, or the Pediatrics Academy, um, they are all often looking at three feet of safety distance. Berrien County Health Department, along with the health departments across the nation, um, have adopted this triangle. The triangle for safety is masks, safety distance, and cohorts. And if you don't have the area to do or the, the ability to do one, you try and really to lean on the other two. So if you're eating and you can't wear a mask, then you try and rely more on cohorting and distance. If you can't do distance, then you need to rely on cohorting and masks. So in the elementary, cohorting will be a huge deal. And you'll notice that throughout the plan. And there's links, if you look for the word cohort, you'll see a link to, so you can actually see exactly what that is from the CDC. In the secondary schools, cohorting is really not possible because the students switch classrooms. So over time, they'll see the same kids over and over and over, but it's not like in the elementary. So those students will be wearing masks all day and we'll be moving kids through the hallways and seating them so they're the maximum distance um, that we can make happen. So there's a, there's a lot of things going into trying to use that, that triangle of safety to make sure our students and our staff are both safe at school and at work. Uh, hallways and lockers. If students get lockers, um, I believe at the high school they are. I'm not sure at the middle school looking at it. Um, they'll only be allowed to use the lockers at, at very specific times. So there won't be clumping and hanging out at lockers like you'd normally see on a, in past years. Um, the office, 
we'll have different ways to come into the office. Each office is different, different size, differently located. Um, think about small businesses you've entered. Sometimes it's only up to three people in the business at a time, or if they can host more people, they may have tape on the floor, or they may ask you to make an appointment and wait in your car until you can call, call you in for the appointment. So we will we'll make more adjustments to that plan on offices here in the near future. But just remember that we are not taking visitors into the school. Lunch service in the secondaries, they are um, expanding their lunch service. Uh, I know at the high school we expanded the number of lunches, but we've also expanded the number of spaces where lunches can be eaten. So we're, again, creating spaces because students will have their masks off. The elementary school, they'll be eating in their classroom with their cohort. Um, restrooms, all that's kind of the same. Bus and transportation, we get a lot of questions here. Um, if you do not need transportation, you choose to bring your student to school this year, please let our bus garage know. They sent out a survey recently. That's super important. We would love to reduce the number of students on the bus. If they are riding the bus because space is an issue, they will be wearing masks and we will be using cohorting. So the first kids on the bus will have seats in the back of the bus and they'll sit in the same seat every day near the same kids every day. Um, that, that's how that will go. So make sure if you need transportation, you, you contact our bus garage. It's more maps. We talked about athletics and extracurriculars. And then it goes to phase five. And phase five, again, is very, very similar to phase four because we want that consistency. If we get moved from three to four to five, back down to four, we don't want a lot of changes. We want consistency and we want a safe environment. We want to keep the cleaning schedules, keep the hygiene uh, expectations and so forth. So it really stays roughly the same between four and five. With all that said, I want to go to the questions. Um, first, I want to share this document. This one answers a lot of the questions. Uh, health and safety had, so when I, when I asked you to do, um, to sign up for this, I, I, I had probably, I don't know, seven categories or so of areas, and then I asked you to ask questions in those areas. And one of the biggest ones was health and safety. And I wanted to share this document. I know I've attached it to some, to some things. We'll make sure it's on the website as well, um, if it isn't already. This one was built uh, by the district superintendents of Varian County and the health department. And it answers a lot of the questions that you were asking um, in our forum the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Process for handling a COVID-19 case at school. So whether we figure out that there's a case or the health department figures out there is a case, we work together with the health department to do the messaging do the contact tracing and to contact families. The health department will take all leadership on that, on that piece. And confidentiality, protecting each student's confidentiality is a key piece of this, this plan. We will help tell them what class a student was in, maybe what bus they ride, where they ate lunch and so on. But the health department will do the actual tracing, the actual full contact to, to the families and so forth. Um, they will tell you who's going to quarantine or who's not going to quarantine and so forth. The school district will send a letter saying that there is a positive case, but again, confidentiality will be kept. All right. So all that to say, and you can follow, you can look at this thing um, on the on the website, but all that to say is that the health department takes this. Um, we support them in that piece. Notification and contact tracing, it talks about what happens when someone gets COVID at school. Um, the health department learns about it and it goes into this piece right here. It talks about privacy is important. Uh, close contacts are identified and notified with quarantine instructions. The close contact, if you don't know this already, close contact is defined as 15 minutes inside of six feet without a mask, talking, um, singing, um, just really close contact in, and sharing that space for more than 15 minutes. That's a close contact. 
So our job as a school district will be to help the health department figure out who that student or staff member was in close contact with, and then they will follow up with that. And then they will say who will go to quarantine and who doesn't. It's not the district on that. We just work with them. Um, the health department will do all notifications and close contacts. At the bottom here is there's an example because one of the biggest questions we always get is, okay, well, what if I was with a close contact? I'm a contact of a close contact. Better way to say it is person A is positive. They were in close contact with B, but I'm B's parent or I'm B's child or I'm B's best friend. Does B have to go to quarantine? In most cases right now, that's no. Again, the health department will decide that, but in most cases, that's a no. Uh, just being in contact of a close contact is not a close contact. Okay, so that's that's how that works. And, and there's you can read this more later. Uh, cohorts help limit, so they talk a little bit about what is a cohort. I've also linked CDC definition of cohort in the plans. You can find that. Uh, they talk about busing. They talk about, you know, elementary K-5. They talk about the secondary, all facing the same direction, all that kind of thing. Um, and then how does COVID spread? They talk about droplets, aerosols. We've been training kids forever to sneeze in their elbow, cough in their elbow. Um, at school, they do a great job of that. Um, and we will continue to have them wash, use um, germ squirt and so forth. And then their objects. Um, there, if there's aerosol or droplets on objects and then a student touches it, puts it on their mouth, that's, that's a possible. I will tell you, we have a very stringent cleaning um, protocol. Every room will be disinfected twice a day, twice in 24 hours, once in the middle of the day, sometime while kids are there, not in the classroom, but while kids are at school, and once either in the evening or morning before kids come to school. So everything is disinfected. And then between classes or when students leave or come back in, germ squirt, hand washing, and things are wiped down again. So there's a lot of cleaning going on um, during this time. Can I send my child to school? So right down here talks about the, the different symptoms. Does your child have symptoms of COVID? And this is what you'd check each morning. Um, are they new, different, or worse than any uh, longstanding conditions? Right, so if their kid's always clearing his throat, is that is it different or new from that, or has he always been clearing his throat? So temperature of 100.4 or signs of a fever, chills and sweating. Everything I've seen has been 100.3 or higher. I'm guessing 100.4 is higher. So in our paperwork, a uh, couple great questions on that, it should be 100.3. Sore throat, new uncontrolled cough, difficulty breathing, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, or onset of a severe headache. If those are new or different or worse than the prior day, then you need to keep your child home. Please do not send them to school. Remember, if you are choosing face-to-face, -face, you're also kind of choosing that remote, right? So if you keep your child at home, your teacher can still respond to your, your student at home. It would be better to leave them home and make sure it's not something more contagious. So leave your child at home if you have these new pieces. If my child stays at home or sent home due to symptoms, talks about how long they should stay. Again, the um, health department's on this piece and we have some uh, graphic organizers and scenarios and so forth that we can share with you. Matter of fact, speaking of scenarios, this is the scenario the um, Berrien County Health Department put together with asking of the superintendents um, to kind of help families see what they should do. And again, this is linked in our paperwork. I'll make sure it's linked on the website as well so you can check that out. Um, so I'm gonna go through the questions. Uh, probably one of the biggest questions I received was, hey, what about hybrid learning? Whatever happened to hybrid learning? Why are we not looking at hybrid learning? And that one kind of fell off the table um, about a month and a half ago. And as health departments and educators continue to review what the hybrid model looked like, it was a piece of education and all the educational supports that go around a whole child. And 
also their home. But when you really look at it, what it would look like, students wouldn't likely go straight home and back to school and straight home and back to school, especially in the secondary. You can see our beaches or walk down to the lake or river, you see kids fishing, riding bikes, and right. They're going to be out, right? Also, the younger kids, they're going to go to grandma's or they're going to go to the Y or they're going to go to um, daycare or they're going to go to a friend's or they're going to go. So now instead of just having basically the home as a cohort and school as a cohort, you now have these other things happening and you still haven't met whole child needs every day, five days a week, right? So the idea of the hybrid has kind of fallen off over time. Um, this is a great article it came out just a few days ago. I want to say three days ago. It was in Wired magazine um, And it has some great resources in there and has some good quotes from from uh, pretty smart people So take a look at that one if you like uh, This is a document we're sharing with the Bering County RESA or the Regional Educational Support Agency um, To just get our parents more information this stuff will be coming out this week and maybe into next week um, it's just a lot of information to try and help define what's going on and uh, our goals, priorities, you know, isolation versus quarantine and so forth. So just, just more information. So I am going to stop presenting and let me go straight to the questions. Um, thank you so much for asking the questions. Uh, so we had like, I don't know, maybe seven categories. Athletics was the first category. I already touched on that one. There were only two questions there. But the idea that athletics is kind of tied, that competition is tied to robotics and is tied to band competition as well. So keep an eye on that as we move forward. Health and safety, one of the bigger topics. Um, how many students are going to be in classes? What's the class size? Hard to say right now. We offer a virtual model and the face-to-face -face model. So, so parents and students have choice. Um, the, more, the more families that choose the virtual model, obviously, will create more space in the classrooms. We do have school of choice as well. We are not looking to take all the school of choice kids and fill up or max, max out our classrooms um, with school of choice kids. That, that's not going to happen. We're accepting about the same number we accepted last year. Um, but we're not looking to fill classrooms. Our, our intent was to make sure our families, our St. Joe Bear families, had a choice. If they were comfortable to go face-to-face, -face, we have that option. If they're not or they want more consistency day-to-day-to-day-to-day, -to -day -to -day -to -day, they can go virtual. So our, our reasoning was to make sure our families had choice. And then from there, um, I assume, based on what I'm hearing from other districts that have opened or are getting ready to open, that um, our class sizes will be reduced because of the number of families going to virtual. So I cannot tell you that right now. Here's what I will say. Right now I am looking at August 17th as the day that I will put something out to you, our families to say, I need to know what your choices are. Um, are you going to choose virtual? Or are you going to choose face-to-face? -face? And it may be different for different students. If you have two or three kids, you, you and I both know they're all very, very different. They may need different environments. So their age level could be another difference. So, but August 17th, I would like to set that as a deadline to find out from our families, are you willing to go face-to-face -face or virtual? And that will help us start to plan and we can start to decide how many students are in these classrooms, all right? Uh, protocols for tracing. Um, when do the students return? I kind of covered that on that other document that um, quarantine, isolation, so forth, when kids return. That's Berrien County Health Department and we just work with them. Some of the biggest questions in in-person learning, that, that category was tell me more about the hybrid model. I shared that a little bit in that article and take a look at that. Um, we are not taking hybrid totally off the table. I think you heard that in the beginning when I started the plan because who knows what's gonna happen in 2021. Um, so it is still kind of in our back pocket. We, we continue to make sure there's plans around it, but at this point in time, with what we know, um, the hybrid model is not an option we're going to use right now. 
Um, masks. How are my students going to see if their teacher's smiling, what they're saying, so on and so forth? We've had a gracious donation by Dr. Caseworm in here in town. Um, she has access to masks that have a clear uh, plexiglass piece in it, window in it, so our students are able to see their teacher's face, maybe recognize them better, uh, know when they're smiling or giving their teacher look or whatever it may be. So huge thanks to her. Um, and then, as I said earlier, each of our teachers will also have two of our masks, as well as students will too. So we'll have plenty of um, masks for our, our people. Uh, clubs we talked about, they will be meeting remotely. We can't have things really going on after school in the buildings due to cleaning. Elementary school recess. The lunch recess has been omitted at this point in time and we have an a.m. and a p.m. recess. And at this time, they're about 20 minutes each. Um, we're still moving some things around to see how that best fits. That could change a little, but it's important to know that students will have breaks. Um, and, and you know what, our, our elementary people are super great. They know when kids are like total, they're done, and there's lots of ways to give them little breaks um, so, so they're fresh and they can keep going. So. Our, our people are amazing. They'll take great care of your students. Um, August 17th, I mentioned, I'm going to put that out there again. Um, end of the day, I'd like to know what your choices will be. And I understand you don't have all the information you'd love to have. We are going to continue to get out information to you before that time and after that time um, to make sure that you see what uh, in-face schooling and virtual schooling would look like here in St. Joe. Mental health, uh, I touched on this a little bit as well. We have outstanding counselors and social workers. They're doing great work um, and they work with and partner with in, um, outside uh, groups and facilities to make sure we have the best access to everything. And they're doing great work with us. This will be a huge area for us as we come back in the fall. Uh, special education. A lot of questions on what about IEPs, what about speech, what about um, meeting my students' needs, at, whether it be virtual or face-to-face -face or even remote. Um, basically, that's federal law. We, we have to make sure that happens. We may have to make some changes to um, how we actually do that or possibly in a done to an IEP, and I'm talking beyond my, my scope right now. Um, but at the same time, I know that we will meet your needs, the needs of all the students. Um, our director, Mrs. Resig, Resig, is outstanding. She's already working with the Berrien County RESA to make sure we have the best support possible. And she has all her organizations which are helping her get more information as well. So we will take care of those kids and make sure they are meeting their goals. And the last item was more about the virtual school. One of the top questions in the virtual school is, um, Tell me about the cap. How many kids are there? What's the cap? Uh, we've been working with Edmentum and there will not be a cap. Um, probably some of their paperwork says that. Maybe it's a marketing thing, but with us, with St. Joe and Edmentum, there will not be a cap. Um, for us, again, it's really about being able to offer our parents access to quality education where they're comfortable. If they want face-to-face, -face, we have that. If they want virtual, we have that. And that's, that's an option for our parents. And so there's no cap. There's not going to be a cutoff. If you choose virtual, you're, you're in, okay? Um, we want to know what a typical day looks like. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of different material. And Mr. Prattley is working on all that. And I'm sure he's been putting stuff out already today. And he'll continue through this week and, and into the future as well. So you'll, you'll see a lot more on that. Uh, good question about mentors. Who are they? Uh, our mentors will be our own people, um, likely people that we already have employed right now, and they'll work with your students here. Um, and then they will also coordinate with the virtual teacher who is a Michigan certified teacher. And their curriculum um, will align to our curriculum. So this is the beautiful part about working with Edmentum. They're a partner with us. Um, we can customize things to make it work with us. Uh, the other great piece about uh, Edmentum, uh, this, this virtual school, is that we want it to be a social piece. We don't want the student just sitting at home doing stuff on the screen or on the computer and never connecting with St. Joe 
um, other peers or other things that we, other programs or other things. So we want our virtual students to be able to take part in other things that we offer here that are social in at the school district. Now, safety wise, we gotta be careful. We're gonna start slow, start small. But I think as we move into future semesters, you're gonna see a lot of opportunities for students in those virtual, in that virtual setting. Uh, computers, will we furnish one-to-one -one for the computers? Yes, we will. We'll make sure students have uh, Wi-Fi and uh, machines to work on the internet. Um, the last piece that I wanna say about virtual is this. Everybody knows St. Joe Schools has five schools. We have three elementaries, a middle school and a high school. We now really, really have six schools. We recognize this St. Joseph Virtual School is our sixth school. It's super important to us that this school is still under the St. Joe Public School umbrella. These kids are our St. Joe Bears. They're not leaving us. They're not going anywhere. Ed Menem is just a partner kind of in the background. Um, this is our people, our school, our kids, and we want them connected to us. So that's that's a big piece for us. We, we don't want you just going off somewhere and having to do this online stuff all by yourself. So it will be very connected to St. Joe Public Schools. All right, those are the biggest questions that were asked over and over. Um, there were a lot of questions. Um, some were very, very specific that you may have better answers from in the coming weeks as we start planning or maybe from a principal or even a teacher and so forth. Um, we will get into those. Uh, I will also create an FAQ for answers to questions that we'll have on the website, um, answering most of the questions that I did not answer here already today. And there we go. I wanna say one last time, I, I feel for our parents, I feel for our teachers right now and, and probably even our students in that there's a lot of unknowns. And uh, I wanna say I've been living this every day, weekends, nights, uh, for months and months right now, and information is hard to come by. Guidelines are hard to come by, and that that doesn't help you, and I'm, I'm sincerely sorry for that. Um, we will do the best we can. We have amazing people here. I have an amazing administrative team, a great board, a wonderful foundation. Um, the teachers are very relational and very supportive, and we're going to make this work and nobody can do it better than us. You wouldn't wanna be anywhere else but St. Joe, because I, I think we're gonna have a great program. I believe we're gonna offer outstanding instruction and support for all students. So with that said, um, have a great evening. Thank you for coming to listen and listening for such a long time. Um, and I'm sorry this afternoon didn't work out right away, but here you go, here's the stream version. You can fast forward or rewind all you want. All right, have a great day. Thank you again. Go Bears. I'm going to stop the recording.